In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to uh, exchange your face in the place of someone else's face. In order to be able to do this, you need to have your face in the same pose as the face you're replacing. If you can get the lighting as close as possible as well, you'll be able to match it up pretty well. So we can see that the lighting is pretty much straight on the front of the um, the forehead here down the nose got some nice lighting on the cheekbones and on the chin. You can also see that the position of her face is turned slightly sideways but she is looking straight on on the camera. Now you don't have to do that. You could be looking off as long as your face is in the same position. And then what we're going to do is we're going to line up this chin. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I have um, this in here, and this is the one that we did um, in class. We had a little bit of fun with a model picture that I found um, in Pexels.com. I'm going to trash those and just uh, stick with the original here. And so the effect we're trying to achieve is replacing Mona Lisa's face with your face. Now you can choose any poster image that you want in order to accomplish this. You can have a lot of fun putting your face on other people's faces. Again, your face needs to be lined up in the same position as the one you're replacing and lighting is really important to get a full realistic effect in the end. So here I have Mona Lisa. I have a single background image. I just simply did file open and open the image giving me this background image. Now I need to place, file place embedded, my own photograph to put on top. So I will go locate that and I'm going to file, place embedded. And I'm going to locate that file. Here we go, my headshot. And I'm pretty close to the same facial position. My lighting is off to the side here though, so I'm going to need to correct that a bit. And I even going to show you how to do that. So, in order to uh, whoops, in order to get rid of the X that shows up. So once again, I'll place that again. In order to get that X to disappear, it just means you have to commit to having placed your file. So here we go. We have a file. It has an X through it, which means we can't do anything until we commit to its size and placement. You can place it as is by hitting the enter key on a PC, the return key on a Mac. And now how am I going to line it up and replace Mona Lisa's face with my face? Well, the first thing we need to do is be able to see our face, our, your, your now newly added face to Mona Lisa's. So how are we going to do that? Well, luckily in the layers palette over here, I'll just move this over. We can see that my photo is over top of the other. But we have all these great things that we can do across the top here. We can change blending modes. I can blend mine right into the image below, but that's not going to be helpful for me for lining it up. So what I'm going to do so that I can see through my photo into the photo below is I'm just going to change the opacity here just a bit so I can see the eyes I want to be able to line up the eyes. Okay, so 66, 50 to 66 is going to be adequate enough, anywhere between that range. And now I need to select my image. I can move it around, but I need to scale it down and move it into place. In order to get the bounding box for any object on any layer you're working in, make sure you have the layer you wish to select. Use Control T on a PC, Command T on a Mac and grab a corner anchor point. Now, if I do not hold shift, I am going to absolutely distort myself. And we never ever want to do that. Control Z is your boo-boo button to go back a step. Or if you need to, you can use your history palette, which I'll have open up here. So I want to grab a corner anchor point and hold shift, our best friend on the keyboard, so helpful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale my image down. I'm not sure how big or small I need it at the moment until I move it into place. But I'm going to let go of my mouse first and always before letting go of shift. I'm going to start moving that into place. And with control plus, I'm going to zoom in on my selection so I can better see what I'm doing. And I'm going to line up the bottom of the chin, but I need my eyes lined up as much as possible with her eyes. And the reason for that is, is we're, all our faces are different. 
we're all quite different. But if you match up the chin and the eyes, you'll get as close as humanly possible to matching that up because our noses and our other features aren't going to line up. So I've got my eyes somewhat lined up, the chin lined up, but I you can see that this eye is pretty much dead on, but this one is a little bit low. So how do I rotate this image now that I've placed it? Well, if you hover your mouse down in the corner, any corner, if you hover outside of that anchor point, and this is true of any Adobe program you're in, if you hover outside the corner, you get double-ended round arrows. So if I click and drag that a bit now, I can just gently rotate my image and I will now move it up into place. And I might have to rotate a little bit more. There we go, I'm pretty close. So again, I'm just trying to line up the actual eyes here, right into the pupils and the bottom of the chin. Our mouths and nose may not line up, our foreheads might be in different positions, but that's okay. So we're trying to line this up as much as possible. And now I'm gonna hit enter to confirm my spot. Now I need to get rid of the background, so I'm going to increase the size or the opacity back to 100%, and I'm gonna cut myself out. The easiest way to do that is to use the lasso tool as a selection tool. If I select the lasso tool, it's basically just a freehand tool that allows you to select your optic, and I'm going to be very crude with my selection because I'm going to go back in and erase stuff I don't want later. So there's my very crude, loose selection. I have more than I need. That's what you want because you can always erase some, but you can't bring it back. So here we go. I have my selection, and now if I try to hit delete, what happens? Hmm. I can't complete this back uh, erase because or this um, deletion of the selection because it's a smart object. So what's a smart object? Every time we place an image, it is a smart object, which means you can't make changes. You can size it and you can do a few other things, but you can't get rid of any backgrounds. There's lots of things that we can't do. Well, it's called a smart object because it's trying to save us from ourselves from making um, terrible decisions um, especially um, we don't want to change colors and we don't want to delete parts of logos per se. So how do we get rid of this crazy um, smart object? Well, you hit the control key. Whoops, sorry. You choose the control key and you get on it. Or, sorry, instead of this, I'm working on a Mac, so I don't have the option of my right click. My control key is my right click on a Mac, so if you're on a Mac, simply right click on the layer on a PC, and you'll get this menu here. Don't click inside the thumbnail, because you'll get a different menu, which does not have the option that we need. So we need to click inside this area here, right click, and choose rasterize layer. So raster is an image made up of pixels and dots. It's a pattern of pixels and dots and you need to be able to manipulate those in order to erase the background. So now that I have removed the smart object, I can now delete my background. But wait, I have selected my face. I want to select the background. So what I need to do is go under the selection menu. So any selections that you make, it has its own menu and you can do all sorts of things here. We just want to simply inverse our selection, so we select the background. Now that I've inverted it, if I zoom out, you can see that my face is selected, but everything in between is selected. Now when I hit the delete key, or sorry, the backspace button on a PC, you now have deleted the background. Control D will deselect that selection and now we need to start doing some creative erasing. I don't need all of this. What I really need to keep, if I change the opacity down, I'm not even going to keep any of my hair I don't think. I think I'm just going to make sure I preserve my glasses, my cheeks, my chin, I might even try to salvage my ear and erase some of this hair and I'll just blend it into hers. 
Now, how do you blend that in and make it look realistic? So what we do is we need the eraser tool. And if you're not sure what tool is which, you just hover over with your mouse and it'll tell you exactly what it is. I'm gonna select the eraser tool. And if I hover over my screen, you can see what size the brush is. If you have caps lock on, however, you'll get this symbol. This symbol either means your brush is too small to work with or you have caps lock on. If you simply turn caps lock off, you'll be able to see the size of your brush. So how do you change the size of your brush? Up here in the menu, that shows up no matter what object you or tool you click on, you'll get the menu for that particular tool. So right now, I have a brush. If I click on this little icon here, it's 102, which isn't gonna be adequate enough for erasing this. And the size of the brush is relative to the pixels per inch in your photo. And look at the hardness. The hardness is 100%. So what happens if the hardness is 100% and I try to cut some stuff off? Well, it looks like I've just cut it out with a pair of scissors and that is not what I want. If you change the hardness of the brush to 0%, watch what happens with your brush now. You get a very soft, smooth edge and that's what we want. So I'm going to start just gently erasing all this stuff here. I'm not going to get too close here. I have to be careful not to erase too much. So I'm going to come around and gently try to erase those hard edges so they're soft. I probably can eliminate my earring too. And I'm going to come around the top and blend in by erasing that, blend out my own hair into Mona Lisa's hair. Ah, I think I'm going to eliminate my ear. Yep, it's not there. Now, this is looking pretty kooky, as in, it's not looking so realistic. So I have a few things I need to do here. One, I am very pink compared to Mona Lisa. Two, I have a bit more creative erasing to do, so I'm going to reduce the size of my brush here and zoom in, control plus, and I'm gonna do a better job cleaning up the edges here with my eraser tool. I want to get close to the edge and reveal my own cheeks and let's see how this works here. Do -do -do. Moving along and so now I blend in a bit more. There we go. I'm going to blend out my own hair here. So not looking good, so good, right? Because now we have some other things we need to do. One, we need to match up the color. So control minus to zoom out. I'm very pink, she's very yellow. So what do we do next? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go under my favorite menu for making color alterations is image, adjustments, hue saturation. Now we've used this before and this is an excellent tool to use when you're looking to changing colors. Now in class we had questions, well why when I hover over yellow am I getting purple? Well, it's the opposite color on the color wheel. So if we want to change the hue to get the opposite, we need to work closer to the purples and then the blues to get the opposite. So right now I'm a little bit too green. There we go. I'm getting closer. But the other thing is, is I'm not as saturated as this yellow. Saturation just means intensifying the color. So now I'm going to go down to the saturation slider and let's see what happens when I intensify or increase the yellow. There we go. I'm getting a lot closer to the color. So if I click OK right now and I do a Control Z to see how the difference, Control Z, Control Z, back and forth, will show you the difference. So I'm way closer now to the color of Mona Lisa. But I still don't blend in very well. So I'm going to go back to my eraser. I'm going to choose a larger size here. There we go. But if I erase just like this, I'm just erasing and I'm not really blending in very much. So what I can do is I can control the amount of erasing that I do. So where we change the eraser, this is the size of your eraser and the hardness of your brush. But if you move over, you can actually change how much you erase at one time. So I'm going to reduce that down to 10 and I'm going to start erasing 
10% at a time. Every time you click is another 10%. There we go. So I'm just going to start cleaning up this edge. Click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. And I'm trying to blend myself in, click and drag, into the background of the original Mona Lisa. There we go. I might have to reduce the size of my brush. And you don't have to go into this palette here, by the way. You can actually use the square brackets, right hand to go up, left hand bracket to go down, to increase and decrease the size of your brush. Control plus because I have this terrible green happening on this side. So click and drag and paint. Click and drag and paint that out. So the more I do this, I can actually see through the image. Be careful not to take away too much because you still need to be recognizable as yourself here. And we can take a fair amount of this out to try to reveal also just a little bit percentage of, see that crackular, that old painting cracking of the paint? We can reveal some of that through by simply just erasing a little bit more of ourselves, but still keeping the detail here. And the more I click and drag, 10% each time. Now I'm starting to blend in more to the original so I can give myself a more realistic, I'm painted, I'm actually the Mona Lisa effect, wearing glasses. All right. There we go. So maybe a little bit more here. All right. I'm even going to come in here where the glasses are and see if I can reveal a bit of the cracked layer in here as well. Pretty amazing, isn't it? What you can do in Photoshop? Impressive. I have the green screen of my my phone too on a selfie that reflected in my glasses. I may or may not take that out. So now I'm going to do control zero. There we go. Not too bad. I'm pretty blended in there. So the only thing that's really missing is adding more crackler texture. So I'm going to erase a bit more of this out and myself right in here. But again, this still looks like me as Mona Lisa. So control zero. So I could save it and be pretty happy with uh, re the replacement right now, but I could go searching for another image called Soil. Um, the funny thing is, is it's really hard to find this cracked oil painting texture that is just this oil painting texture. Um, unless I copy and paste this area right here, but I won't have enough to cover this surface area. So you could go look for cracked mud so it's funny that some other textures that mimic the look, you can find all sorts of other things. I'm going to try by selecting the background image here. I'm actually going to try grabbing a piece of this by selecting it here with my lasso tool. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to move up to my next layer and hit Control V to paste. See how it, whenever you copy and paste something, it creates a new layer? But where did it go? It actually pastes right over top of where you copied it. See that? I'm going to move that on top and see if I can't use some of that to mimic the cracked layer. And it's in the same shape and size. Control T to get the bounding box. I'm going to rotate it though because I don't want to 100% copy the exact same thing and then we have this repeated pattern. If I change the rotation of the pattern, it might be less, less um, obvious that I've copied and pasted a pattern. Okay, so that looks terrible, right? <laughs> so luckily for us, we have these cool things called blending modes. I could simply multiply it in to the face below and now you can see it there's all this great crackle texture on top but now I've got blending two colors together so it intensifies the color 
There are other layer styles you can try or blending modes. So there's overlay, which is quite bright, soft light, that might work. But we still have the intensity of the color. So what can we do? Well, we just change the opacity. There we go. I'm gonna try overlay again. And it's a little bit bright. So what I can do is under image adjustments again, hue saturation, or you can see the quick key combo is control U. I can desaturate it all together. See that? You can still see a bit of an edge. So what I all I have to do now is and I'll increase the opacity again so you can see it. What I'm going to do is go back to my eraser tool and now I'm going to go up to 100% and I'll erase and blend off that edge. So I keep it where I want to keep it and I blend this off so it doesn't look like I cut it out with a pair of scissors. There we go. I now have the crack lure texture over top of the picture where I need it, control zero. It's a little bright on this side, so we have one more tool to show you. If you have too much intensity of color on one side, you need to lighten it, you need to darken it. We have things we can do under, again, the adjustments panel. This time, this is levels. And if we bring in the blacks, there we go. See how there's no black information in here? And yet the mountain range, the slider is all the way over here. If we pull that towards the mountain range, we can intensify and increase the darks. If we bring the whites in, you can see there's lots of white happening here. But if we bring that in, we actually intensify it. So we don't want to do that. But our mid-tone slider allows us to lighten and darken the image as necessary. So I'm going to leave it about there. Let's click OK. And if I do Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, I've managed to darken it. And I can see where I want to erase a bit more of that out. If it's still too intense with the lighting here on this side, there's one more awesome tool I use, and it is called Dodge Burn and the Sponge Tool. What is Dodge Tool? That uh, the Dodge Tool actually lightens areas that you that you hover over, um, and you can lighten highlights, midtones, and shadows. The Burn Tool darkens those features, and the Sponge Tool will saturate or desaturate those features. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn in, burn in my mid-tones here using a bigger brush, a much bigger brush, and I'm going to keep my exposure of that, so the intensity of how dark that goes. And you can see I'm able to darken those features now on my photo. If I go really intense, I can show you what that looks like. So there's my midtones. See how dark that can go in a real hurry? So what you want to do is you want to keep the exposure down. So basically the amount of pressure you put on that. Like we did with our eraser, you can do fine changes. There we go. And I'm just going to paint over those midtones. If I paint in the highlights, it goes a little bit gray. It might not be that bad. Now, there's one thing that I've been doing, and what I've been doing is look at the layer that I'm on, and I didn't name it. If I name that layer, this is my crack texture. What happens if I now go into my headshot image and I try to burn in the highlights? See what happens there? I'm darkening the highlights. So I'm going to go in there. So make sure you have the right layer selected, the one that you want to do the work on. So I'm going to grab the midtones here, and I'm just going to intensify the midtones to try to match it up. Go back to the highlights because this highlight on my glasses is too bright, and I'm just going to click and paint over 
and darken that a bit so the lighting matches up a bit more. So this takes a bit of a, an eye, an artistic eye, but uh, do your best you can. It's a lot of fun. And now that I'm done, I'm going to move this over. Control zero. Let's see the whole thing. And there I am. I am now the Mona Lisa for the most part. So what we do is we file, we save as, always saving a working file. Why do we want to save a working file? And this is the Carolyn Mona Lisa. We always want to save a working file so that we can preserve our layers. So that's a Photoshop PSD file. Say OK to this. This is OK. And that preserves these in case we need to make changes. Okay, I actually like it better without my cracked clear texture because I did too much work. It's easy to go overboard. I did too much work on the uh, on the crackler um, with the I burned it in with the raw on the wrong layer so I've now created a bit of a mess there so I'm just going to put that in the trash can Doop. so now I just have the two to work with so my face Mona Lisa and I can go back and do some more work on it again so again file save as always saving preserving your layers PSD that is our working file Yes, I will replace that. Okay. And for uploading, for marking, or for placing in your guide, I'm going to allow you to have JPEGs for this. So we're going to save as a JPEG. And when that happens, a JPEG, you see right here, it flattened my image. So my face is now embedded in the Mona Lisa, and I can no longer make any adjustments to my face layer over top of the Mona Lisa layer because it's now blended together. We can also control the amount of compression. So eight is fine. You can see the compression brings us down to two megabytes versus 7.6. Wow, what a difference. So if you're trying to save space on your computer, you can lower the size and that's adequate for print. And if we take a look at the bottom left of the screen, the original when it opens in full size, is 34.8 megabytes. It's a pretty big file. And that's it. And the next lesson will be on cropping your image to fit the size of the page you're working on.